Welcome to Django Redirects. My name is Chris, and I will be your guide. In this course, I'll be talking about how to do an HTTP redirect inside of Django. First off, I'll cover just what an HTTP redirect is, how to use Django's redirect shortcut, how to use Django's redirect view class helper, what to do if your redirects require parameters, and finally, those corner cases and caveats. The code in this course was created using Django 3 and Python 3.8. Most of the content should apply to earlier versions. Django 2 and Django 3 are fairly compatible. There's one small exception, which I'll mention in later lessons. If you use anything earlier than Django 2, you will run into problems in that the URL pathing structure changed between late versions of Django 1 and Django 2. Almost all of the code examples shown throughout here are found inside of a Django project called Redirector, which is available for download inside of the description. Feel free to download it and follow along as I talk about each section. This course assumes familiarity with Django views and URL patterns. If you need to review this content, view the prologue for a refresher or visit some of the links in the description. So let's get started. The obvious question, what's an HTTP redirect? This is a response from the web server that tells your browser that a page has been moved. In addition to telling the browser that the page has been moved, it usually indicates where to. Most browsers automatically load the new location. This means users may not even realize that the redirect has happened. There are several different kinds of redirects and how the browser caches the response dictates the behavior when the URL is visited again. This means you may want to be careful about which kind of redirect you use. So why would you want to redirect? Let's start answering that question by looking at how Django itself uses redirects. If you try to access a URL that is in a area that requires authentication and you haven't authenticated yet, Django will redirect you to the login page. Likewise, once you've completed that login, it will redirect you back to the URL you came from. If you're changing your password, it will redirect you to the successfully changed password page after the password change has been input. And in the Django admin, if you've created a new, new object, it will send you to the object listing afterwards. Outside of Django, URL shorteners like Bitly are essentially redirect engines. And it's also an important part of form handling. Common pattern in Django is to use a single view for both presenting the form and accepting its submission. Inside the view, you check whether it is a get or a post. If it is a get, the form is presented to the user. If it is a post, the form is processed for input. If you use this mechanism, you need to be able to send the user to a subsequent page after the form has been processed successfully. Redirects allow you to do this. Let's take a look at what happens when I hit a Django web server. I'm going to use curl to hit the development server, hitting the name hello. The hello path is found inside of the destination app URLs file and maps to a view called hello world in destination views. You can see that code here. The hello world view returns an HTTP response object using a content type text plane meaning just the string hello world slash n gets returned to the web browser, no wrapper HTML. Throughout this course, I'm going to use content type text plane to make it easier to see what the results are, rather than having the additional complexity of the wrapped HTML. This view returns, curl gets the body back, and you see hello world printed to the screen. Let's try that again, this time using curl's dash dash include parameter. Dash dash include tells curl to print out the headers as well as the body coming back. You can see the response code of 200 coming back from the web server, six additional headers, as well as the hello world body. Let's do that again, this time hitting a URL that redirects. Once again, using curl's dash dash include, this time going to a URL called redirect. The redirect pattern is found in the simple app Earl's file. You can see it here, redirect, goes to views redirect view. Inside of simple views, you can see that the redirect view is using the redirect shortcut going to slash destination slash. This response is returned by Django to curl. It's important to understand that Django is not actually sending you somewhere else. It's sending a message to the browser to go somewhere else it is the browser's responsibility to go to the new URL. 
You can see the response here. Status code 302 means redirect, and the location header sees slash destination telling the browser where to go. By default, curl does not follow redirects, it just prints out the information. If I'd been using Chrome or Firefox to show this demo, you wouldn't see this, you would just see the results of slash destination. By default, Chrome and Firefox follow through on the location. Every response from the web server includes a status code. You've seen the 200, meaning success, in the previous examples with curl. In addition to that, you may have come across others as well. 401 means unauthorized and causes the browser to pop up an authentication box. 403 tells the user they don't have permission to see this URL. 404 means the page isn't found. And 500 means you've messed up as the programmer on the server side. Going through the example with curl, I showed you the 302 redirect status. There are a series of redirect status codes, starting with 301, meaning moved permanently. 302 was the one that I showed you. In the original specification, it meant moved temporarily. In HTTP 1.1, it was changed to mean found. 1.1 also introduced the concept of 303 and 307. This is one of those cases where the standards in the real world don't really match. Although HTTP 1.1 and on have several different ways of using these redirects with subtle differences about how to behave in the cases of gets and posts, most programmers still use 302 under its original intent moved temporarily. Here's the actual spec. The 302 found status code indicates that the target resource resides temporarily under a different URI. Since the redirection might be altered on occasion, the client ought to continue to use the effective request URI for future requests. The server should generate a location header field in the response containing a URI reference for the different URI. The user agent may use the location field value for automatic redirection. Why is it that specifications always sound like the legalese at the end of a drug commercial? What this essentially says is the 302 will include a location header field containing the value of the new URL. It's up to the implementation of the browser to decide whether or not to automatically redirect. It also states that in subsequent visits to this original URL, the browser should still hit the original URL as it may no longer be redirected or it may be redirected somewhere else. This is an important distinction. There's both temporary and permanent redirects. In the case of temporary redirects, the browser should not store this information. Every time the original URL is hit, the browser should attempt to go to that URL. For permanent redirects, the browser is meant to remember the redirection. Subsequent typing in of the original URL should automatically go to the redirected URL. This means you can't change your mind about a 301. I'll talk more about this in Lesson 5. That's the basics of HTTP redirect. Next up, I'll talk about Django's shortcut redirect method.